Here's something you may not have considered. If you have a synth with a sine wave, you may add a second synth with a sine wave or at least something similar. Now by default, it gets louder, right? But what happens if those two waveforms are out of phase? We get nothing. Today, I want to cover why phase cancellation is important to understand and how not understanding it can actually ruin your songs and lead to a bunch of mixed problems. Now, phase cancellation is an important technique among a bunch of others to nail as you are advancing as a producer. So if you want to uncover a bunch of techniques, not just phase cancellation, that can help you move forward and make you make more professional music, then check out our music production handbook We've got advice from over 30 plus artists, engineers, and producers in there, all designed to help you take your music to that next level. So you can grab that for free in the description. Let's get into it. So as you would have noticed, these two synths I have here are generating a sine wave. Now a sine wave is the most pure form of sound. So we can very easily hear the effect of phase cancellation in our mixes with this example. Let's go back to playing both of these sine waves at the same time. So adding two sounds together means they're louder, right? but this is what we call full correlation. The two sounds, as we can see here, once we turn on and off this sine wave two, we're just getting loudness. But I'm gonna add on this delay and watch what happens when I increase the time of this delay and move the second sine wave out of phase with the first one. we get practically silence, right? Now I'm gonna go to this audio example so you can see visually what I'm talking about. We have two sine waves that originally are aligned like this, right? They are stacked on top of each other. But slowly but surely we're moving these out of phase, move it smooth there, until we get complete cancellation. You can see when one goes up, the other goes down. And this is the phenomenon where we get complete silence or at least close to it, right? And that's what we want to avoid in our mixes where we're adding sounds together in some fashion and they're actually reducing or weakening our mix. Now this not only happens on our stereo channel, but it can actually happen between the left and right speakers as well. If I have these two sine waves now on the same synths here, panned one left and the other right, we get a pretty cool normal sound, right? But if we add that phase inversion trick that I had where we're actually flipping the phase of one of those, because one of them is on the right ear, we get this really interesting stereo effect. Now, if you do this in your song, a newer producer might come along and say, hey, this sounds sick. I'm gonna add this on all my leads. It's like the secret stereo technique that no one's using. It's gonna become part of my signature sound. Whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. You don't wanna be doing this in your mixes. Because what happens is when you're, especially with your bass, the whole mix gets summed to mono, especially when it's being fed into a subwoofer, you get this effect where it cancels out. Because even though the left and the right channels are separate, you're bringing them together in both the left and right are gonna be down the center, meaning they're coming out of both speakers or headphones, meaning those phase differences are now gonna be audible, which means we get nothing. So I wanna show you a few practical examples of this in, in real the real world when we're actually making music, right? I'm gonna start off with a kick here because a kick is probably one of the most common ways that we get unwanted phase cancellation. Let's say you've got a nice sounding kick sample like this kick drum here. But let's say I wanted to add a bit more punch to it by layering in a second kick drum. So let me turn this second kick drum up here. Ooh, all that low end disappears, right? It's not as simple as chucking a second kick drum in there and expecting things to magically feel bigger. No, there is actually a science to this. Again, if we go and look at the waveform because kick drums do tend to be based off a sine wave or at least somewhat similar, we can see the curvature of this first waveform and the curvature of the second waveform are actually heading in the opposite directions. This means that we're getting phase cancellation, meaning we're gonna get none of that bass goodness that makes our kick drum punch through in the low end. So the way you can actually solve this is we're going to go onto our second kick drum or first kick drum, it doesn't really matter which, and we're gonna flip on these two left and right phase flip switches in Ableton. And what this is gonna do visually, you can imagine the waveform flipping around so that the peaks 
are now going up and the troughs are now going down and flipping those around. So let's listen to that with that phase inversion turned on. Oof, much better. With it off, with it on. And now we can actually layer our kick drums perfectly and they are all aligned and all the goodness of the low end is still there. Now in the real world, sometimes you may have kick drums that at times do align and other times don't align. The point here is to kind of play around with both versions and see which one sounds better. And if it just doesn't sound good at all, probably opt for a different kick sample or try pitching it around so that the phase kind of aligns a bit better because as you can see here, when we're pitching our kick samples up and down, we can kind of move the phase of them around and therefore get that low end aligned and our kicks punching where we want it to. Okay, next example is for a bass line. Now, bass layering is super common in electronic dance music. We want to get a huge low end, a nice gritty bass, or depending on the genre you're going for, it could be a nice rolling bass, whatever you want. Low end often gets layered up. We have a sub layer sometimes, sometimes we have multiple bass layers. In this example, I've got a nice kind of saw based sound. Just a nice saw serum patch here with a bit of effects processing on, which sounds kind of nice, right? But let's say I wanted to add a bit of fullness and I don't know, width and fatness to the sound. Well, I might opt for a second layer, but what most people do is they use layers that are too similar to the one that they've already got, meaning there's no real point in layering it in. Let me show you by adding in the second bass example, which sounds like this. And let's layer them together. And off. For me, it doesn't really do the job. The sounds are too similar. And it, in fact, for me, it actually adds more mud to the low mids of the sound. Instead, when you're layering, you should be looking at layering sounds that don't have similar basic waveforms, or at least if they do, they have different sets of processing just to make the sound sonically different so that when we're layering, we're not getting that awkward phase cancellation that is just gonna weaken our sounds and cause all sorts of shifting and just yucky stuff we don't want. Instead, I would go into the second patch, which is also a saw based patch. And I would look at maybe trying to find a different wavetable, maybe something like this. And maybe using a bit of distortion to dirty up the sound. Or maybe not that much. Maybe some chorus or something, just to give it a bit of a different sonic characteristic, right? And now when we layer this up with our original, we get something different that we didn't have before. The phase cancellation isn't just weakening the sound. The sounds are different enough so when they stack, they each fill in their own space, which is perfect. Another quick example with a guitar sample here. This is probably a more stereo example because let's say we have a mono guitar sound here and we just want to go ahead and let's just listen to it first. It sounds nice, but we need to add a bit of stereo image to it, right? Now, a lot of the stereo imaging plugins or chorusing plugins or anything that adds width which includes reverbs, delays in some cases, can be nice, but it's also worth considering what are the implications of that sound becoming wider when we then have to sum it to mono, say we're playing on a system that only has one speaker or something like that. You have to consider these things when you're adding in stereo effects. So for example, I added this micro shift plugin on, which is a nice kind of shift chorusy plugin from Sound Toys. I absolutely love this plugin. But what happens is it sounds really cool when we add the stereo effect. Adds that nice kind of 80s guitar sound, right? But then when I go ahead and turn on a utility to hear what it sounds like in mono. You can hear that the original version It's not just changing the width, it's actually adding a different characteristic to the sound. Now, sometimes that might be what you want, but if you're just wanting to add pure width, you may have to find a different plugin that does what you want. Now, this is where something like the Isotope Ozone Imager or the Polyverse Wider plugin that I love to use as well. These two are great stereo imaging plugins that actually don't add 
any changes to the mono signal. If you're not sure what I mean, give this a listen. Let's hear it with it off again so we know what it sounds like. With the wider plugin on. And with the utility turning it to mono on. Turn off the wider. Literally rapidly clicking it and there's no difference to the mono version of the sound. This is why something like this is a great plugin to have on hand. This one's free. I'll actually leave a link for it in the description just to get a bit of width in your sound. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show you at the end is how you can use phase cancellation differences to your advantage. Now in the mid range and upper range where phase cancellation isn't as obvious and you know something tomorrow doesn't make a huge difference because the waveforms are happening much faster and changing much faster, we can actually get away with some creative differences, which is really cool. For example, I've got this synth layered up here, two different versions of the exact same thing, just layered left and right. I've just panned them on the mixer here. Sounds nice. It's got some reverb, some other nice effects there to make it kind of wide. But I think we can get away with some differences in our stereo image here simply by using a different synth for the second right version. So let me chuck this on. I'm just gonna turn off the one that's the same and enable the one that's different. Still pan to the right here and let's hear the difference. There's a difference in the right now that just gives the sound a lot more width and apparent space. And because these sounds aren't the exact same in our left and right headphones, they're actually completely different. They're not correlated whatsoever. They're not the same. They're not the opposite. We're just using different sounds it sounds good. And this is really the crux of wanted to, uh, what I wanted to get to today is that music is phase cancellation. You kind of want to avoid it in obvious ways like without kick and bass, but at the same time, you do want to embrace the fact that, hey, layering sounds together, putting different sounds in our mix, all of these things do actually add up and phase cancellation is going to be inevitable. When I add sine waves and a pad and a lead, everything doesn't add up necessarily. Sometimes there are like minor subtractions in the way that those elements blend together, but that's what music is. It's the sum of the parts. And so in a way, I want you to avoid obvious phase cancellation, but I also want you to embrace it. Nothing is gonna be perfect in your music. Music is phase cancellation. If I add all these up, you know, if I bring up my wave analyzer here, I add in the guitar. This is not a good example, it sounds terrible, but... You know, those waveforms moving up and down, everything is gonna blend together and create some sort of cancellation. So I wanted to leave that thought with you today, but if you've liked this video, please stick around, give it a like and subscribe for more from myself, Luca and the rest of the EDM prod team. Great, thanks for hanging around for the last few minutes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.